Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, I will start my talk, but first make sure that you can read this, and, and if you, you cannot, cannot, you can move forward. There, there is a lot of place next to me, so because so because I have a few slides, but I will do a lot of demo, and I will show you how the actual stuff is configured, and uh, so this will be more demos than slides. I will still start with a few introduction slides. Uh, okay. So uh, my goal today is to show you uh, how you can uh, use Prometheus even if you are in a traditional data center because a lot of people think Prometheus yeah, is that clothing, it's for people who use Kubernetes, it's for people who... But that's not, yeah, it's true, but it's also, we are using it in a completely traditional data center when, you know, you cannot go to the cloud because... Yeah, hey. So, uh, and I will show you how you can monitor uh, the traditional things that you have in a data center. Uh, the irony is that for the demo, I, I uh, popped up two servers in the cloud, but you will see it will be fine. So uh, I like open source, I like monitoring, I like automation, and that's my daily job, so I guess I'm fine. Uh, I work at Inuit, we are an open source consultancy company uh, in Europe. Uh, so if you have any needs in open source, we can help you in development, system administration, anything. Just ask us. So a lot starts with uh, DevOps. So you know DevOps. Uh, one of the definition is culture automation, uh, measurement and sharing stuff. And basically, this talk will be about uh, measurement and sharing. Sharing so how you can get lots of metrics and how you can share them. Uh, it will also touch a bit of automation. So let's go for it. Let's go for uh, where all of this started. So uh, the culture part of DevOps is that you should make uh, drop the silos, make one team, uh, let people configure to each other. They should work with a unique goal and share responsibilities. Automation, everything has code, uh, everything uh, is repeatable, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know the thing, right? <laughs> Measure, yeah, you know it. If you are there, you probably know it. Uh, measurement is like you get a lot of metrics, so you get you understand how your infrastructure is working, how your business is working, and you are not only saying, okay, it works, it doesn't work, no, you get more insights, uh, you get uh, business rates, error rates, all of that kind of metrics, and you will get more metrics that you can actually see. So you collect stuff that maybe will never be useful, but if you don't have them and you have an incident, you're like, mm, what would have that looked like if I would have the metrics? And then sharing is like, okay, you have, uh, you have one team, but you want to share the data with the management, you want to share the data be between devs, between ops, so everyone understands the business. And it's not like, yeah, yeah, I will shut down that servers, no one is using it at the moment, and then suddenly your complete backup system is going on, that kind of thing. So you need to understand uh, the business, and you need to share the data of your infrastructure with everyone. So it's the cloud error. Welcome, everyone. So this is the cloud. Here is some buzzwords for you. So the cloud is about scale, like uh, you have uh, more and more servers, you change them a lot, and it evolves very quickly. The bad news is that nowadays, on-premise looks like the cloud too. So you have no other choice that even if you don't use the cloud to move quickly, to scale your application and to uh, adopt new technologies. So even if you are not using the cloud well, you're still in the cloud era, sorry for you. <laughs> and what do you need? Then you need automation so that you can follow and you need scalability. So you need tools that can scale, tools that can handle lots of uh, metrics for monitoring, for example. So you need to have that so you don't need to bother with like, okay, I need to scale horizontally my server, like I need 100 instances of my monitoring solution. No, you need scalability out of the box. So all-in-one tools, bye-bye, uh, tools that don't scale or you cannot automate them, just forget about them, take the right tools, the tools that can live in this uh, environment. So what are the customers asking? They're asking that we respond fast, like that we don't uh, receive the, the phone call from them, like, 
ah, you know, actually, yeah, your website isn't working anymore, so you want to do to know before them that you are done, that something is wrong, and you want to prevent that, obviously. So, better tools, better protocol. Let me introduce to Prometheus. So, Prometheus uh, is uh, cloud native. It means that configuring it, deploying it, maintaining it is very simple. It's not a complex tool, it's easy. You can deploy it in containers, you can deploy it in Kubernetes, uh, and it is multiple services actually, so you can update one of them without in impacting the other ones. It is orchestration ready, it means that it can connect to uh, sources of trust like uh, of trust, like, like uh, Kubernetes, like console, like anything with, which can uh, tell him, okay, this is the, ser the list of the servers, take it, or that kind of things. You can write a script that can, so uh, the way it integrates with uh, third party uh, orchestration tools is can, there is a, a file discovery that you can just pop files with targets into it and then it will discover them. So yes, you can do that with PuppetDB if you want. It's just a simple script to write and then Prometheus will look, oh, there is a new file and it will start monitoring it. So it is data centric. It means that it is all about data. It's not about it is up, down. No, it is. You have a data. You have metadata, and then you can play with them, or uh, you can run queries on them. That kind of things. So a Prometheus metric is like you have a name, and then you have some uh, labels. So in this case, you have uh, the MySQL uh, global status handlers. It's a value in the MySQL global status tables. It's the total, and then you have a metadata which tells you, okay, this represents the template handler. And later you can uh, you can sum all the handlers with all the labels. You can do an average. You can do whatever you want. You can mutate that data. It's open source, which is why we are there. Uh, it's written in Golang, but you don't need to know Golang to use it. But it means that it comes with a single binary. So you get the binary, it gets, it supports so many different architectures, including ARM, including Idris uh, uh, 366, FreeBSD, Windows. You can run into any OS that you want. Uh, directly from the Prometheus project, you have like all the binaries available. And then there is uh, a lot of exporters. So I will come to what is an exporter, but it means that the ecosystem is quite rich, actually. Uh, <coughs> so it is made for performance. So we, you can really fetch a lot of data. And uh, you can fine tune that. Actually, the second line is no longer true with Prometheus 2, sorry. But it is really made to fetch a lot of data and not like, ah, every five minutes I will check if the stuff are right, I will take metrics. No, it's really like you go every 10 seconds, every 30 seconds, if your system can manage that, and then you can go and get, okay, give me the metrics, I will just store them. And if it cannot keep up, well, version 1 did that, I don't know if version 2 does that also, but if really there is too many metrics, it will just slow down a bit, but I've never seen that uh, in, a, in real uh, environments. So. so how is it working? So this is an example with MySQL, and then I, I will show you the real stuff. So there is a MySQL exporter, which is a daemon, because uh, MySQL cannot expose metrics to Prometheus. So to expose metrics on Prometheus, you need to have an HTTP server and to save the metrics, the list of the metrics. Uh, so you have the MySQL exporter, then Prometheus will go, okay, hey, give me your Prometheus metrics. The MySQL exporter will go to MySQL, say, I will do those and those and those queries and store the results. Then it will re reply to Prometheus, hey, those are the metrics into the, the HTTP response. And then Prometheus will say, okay, store them within my database, and I will add additional metadata, like this is from host 1, host 2, host 3. So exporter, HTTP API, uh, you have bindings for many languages. If there is not for your language, you can just write a simple 
uh, web server, so it's really simple. The goal with those exporters is that like they do not cache, they do not proxy, they just fetch the data when you ask it. <coughs> this is important for availability of primitives, which we will see later. So for your data center, uh, which exporter do you have? So I have uh, a primitive server. So uh, this is my primitive server. And uh, I have two Linux machines. So for Linux, you have the node exporter. So the node exporter will give you uh, a lot of information about the Linux system. So if you have a look at the metrics that you have, you have CPU, you have uh, the disk usage, the disk write, the disk, the disk merge, uh, the file system available, you have the file, the, uh, you have the load average, the memory, so you had, you have a lot of different metrics. So actually it's really a lot. Uh, if you are using NFS, you have NFS metrics. Blah, blah, blah. You really have a lot of different metrics for your Linux system. So that is a demand that you run uh, on your uh, machine that reads the slash proc file system and puts a lot of the metrics as in a format that Prometheus will understand easily. So that is the first exporter, the node exporter, one binary, um, easy to run. So yeah. Um, So it is really like one binary, lo you launch it, so uh, if I kill it, and I can just show you that I can launch it again. So this is really easy, and then you start listening to an address, it, you see the list of the modules that it loads that, can, that it can show, and then you are, it, it started, and you can go and query the metrics. Um, the WMI exporter, if, if you are unlucky and you have Windows machines. Uh, then you have Apache. So Apache, you have an Apache exporter, which I did not set up, but I did set up a website. So um, with an Apache server, which serves uh, a page. So that page is really simple. Uh, and basically, what I have installed is the second exporter, the Grok exporter. So, uh, who is familiar with Elasticsearch? Then we, you probably know Grok. So, Grok is a tool. Uh, so, uh, let me just. Uh, okay, it is on the other server. So it, it will scroll the logs, and for each new log line, it will increment a counter. So I will show you. So we have the var log, httpd, access log. So you see that all the requests that we have. So let me just do. I have a script that do that for me that do go to the website and load, so I have a curl running in a loop. And then uh, I can see with the Grok exporter. Uh, some metrics. So the number of HTTP requests with the code 200 and the method get, the code 301, 304, and that is configured like, uh, like this. So if internet is working, okay. So I tell to that exporter, okay, this is my log file, uh, and I want an Apache HTTP request total uh, with that regex, so that's a regex which is built in, which I used, and I want the label method on the verb field and the code on the response field. And that should end up in that 
uh, metric Apache HTTP request total. So it means that if you have an application that just writes to log files and you don't want to mess with writing an exporter or doing fancy stuff, you can always do this and say, OK, I have a log file. I want to do stuff with my log file. In this case, you see that I have those different metrics. Now, if I try to do a post, I should have a new metric. So if I uh, If I do a post, then I sh uh, yeah, it's not the right one. It is just like this. OK, then I should have a post with 404. And you see it is there. So that is uh, when I tell you that Prometheus is data centric. It is that I do not know upfront which metric I will get because it will depend on the business and how the, how the exporter is coming. So I do not say to each Linux server, please, I want to see your disks. I say, OK, give me your metrics. And then I will get all the disks that are available. If there is a new one, I will get the metrics on the new one. And I can do the queries like that. And I don't need to redo my queries every time. I don't need to do anything on the agent. And it is important, especially when you do uh, custom developments, because it is the developers that will be in charge of the metrics that they expose. And you will not ask them, OK, uh, that service, what is it doing? I need that and that and that metric. No, it is their responsibility to provide you with the correct metrics that they want, and so that they can be uh, creative, and then they can add uh, new metrics so that you can say, OK, uh, you add new metrics, that's fine. Now you can query them in the previous interface and understand how your program is working. Yes? Uh, the Apache, um, yes, the Apache uh, exporter, is that another daemon that you're running on the same machine where the node exporter? Yes, the Apache exporter will give you the mod status stuff. So the number of Apache workers that are busy, the number of uh, total connections, the CPU usage. But you will not get the information about your HTTP request per response code, that kind of thing. That's something that you need to do yourself. And I use the Grok exporter for, I for it. Yes. Contrast with how Collect D works, which is just yes. one process which yes. works with plugins. Okay. Yes. Uh, no Prometheus supports Collect D. Well, Collect D supports Prometheus. Uh, but uh, what we are also doing is that uh, from some hosts, we put a small reverse proxy that just does this. So we just need to open one port and we have mutual SSL to connect to the hosts. So. So I will call, I will uh, talk about that later. But basically, uh, Prometheus supports client, the client side security, but it is and they do not do anything at the server side. So the exporters they export plain HTTP, and you can you can put uh, a reverse proxy next to it if you want more security or other stuff, or you can firewall it or anything you want. So the the security is not Prometheus' job. It is your job to do something to secure it, basically. That's how they work. That's how they, because they don't want to uh, implement 10 different servers that will get outdated at the end. So they say, OK, we use HTTP. We support HTTPS with mutual SSL if you want. We support all that stuff. We support basic authentication. We really have a lot of options, but only the client side. That's the policy. But so when you are in cloud environments or when you use OpenShift, then you can do that easily with sidecar pods, that kind of stuff. So it's not really a problem for them. They don't see it as a problem, at least. And also, a lot of these exporters are not made by the Prometheus team themselves. So uh, they just say, OK, we want to run to support the simple stuff so that in three years, we don't have a very, very outdated exporter with only supports CLS, I don't know which version. And that's basically it's your job to add the security on top of that. Uh, 
Uh, I have never noticed an overwrite and we do it in production with like 100 requests per second. So it's really small and uh, yeah, you can even say, okay, if a metric is not used for 12 hours, then we move it from the list, that kind of thing. So uh, I have never noticed a big overhead. However, I should not recommend that you add every user's IP address there because then it will, you will have problems at the Prometheus side and maybe also you will get problems at the Grok exporter side. So Prometheus is not a logging system. It is just a metric system. So uh, we also have next to Prometheus Elasticsearch when you, we need to do fine-grained analysis of the logs. So DNS, or if you are using uh, bind or uh, I have also done that for DNS mass, then you have exporters, but you also have the black box exporter. So what is the black box exporter? It's an interesting one. Uh, so it is the black box exporter is for maintaining black boxes. It means you don't know what's in the DNS box, just like you don't know what is behind an HTTP server. You don't know what is behind uh, your partner's or external website. So the black box exporter will just run uh, queries against systems uh, it can do DNS, ICMP, TCP connections. So I will show you how we do that with DNS. So this is the black box exporter. Uh, and then you see that we do a lot of different probes. So the way it works is that instead of going to uh, the slash matrix to get the matrix of your uh, DNS server, of our, of our, our uh, exporter, then you have a second endpoint on that, on that exporter that can, okay, uh, I want to probe, sorry if you don't read the URL, but you have a slash probe and then you can specify a target and a module. So if I do target equal uh, a.a.a.8 and the module I will put DNS, then I will actually see, okay, Prometheus is doing a DNS request to a.a.a.8. In the configuration file, um, then I have prepared the DNS probe. I have configured it already. If I can find it. So then I say, okay, I have a DNS module. Here is how I configure it. So here it is. So the DNS, it will do a DNS query for loaddays.org and the timeout will be five seconds. And the DNF server, which is what we call the black box, is in this case in the URL a.a.a.8, .a 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 .8, which means that I do not care what is behind the DNS server. I just want it to answer me when I ask him, hey, what is loaddays.org? And then I have a lot of DNS specific uh, Queries, so DNS additional errors, answer errors. I don't even know what this is. I mean, maybe one day we need that. But what is important is probe success one. It means that, okay, the probe, the probe was successful. So that is the DNS query. Uh, you can check an IRC server. It's in the default example. You can check if you have the SSH banner. Uh, and more importantly, you can check HTTP like, do I get a HTTP 200 response? Uh, do I get the same when I do a post? And you can have uh, regexes inside the different uh, answers and posts, so you can actually do more uh, advanced stuff if you want. Uh, so I also do some HTTP 200, so I can show you now the Prometheus interface. So it is like this, and then we have the list of the targets. And you can see that for the DNS, I have I use the target 1111 and 8888. So those are the parameters and the URLs that are used. But I also have a HTTP black box that I set up that checks the low days website and another website that I did put in place. So now if I do that in a query, so the probe success, which is uh, done by the uh, node exporter. So if I put equal equal zero, then I will see what is failing now in the probe. So I see that in the DNS black box 1.1.1 cannot resolve uh, loaddays.org or there is a bug somewhere else. 
uh, spoiler, there is a bug, I think. Uh, but now, so if I look at all my probe success, and now I will, I have that website, and I will just move it. So like, uh, oops. What's going on? I cannot exit Vim. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So I go to var www.html, and then I have the load days. And if I move it like this, now I get like, eh, not fun. I do not know that server. And now, OK, it should. It OK, no, it is 0 because the error code is not correct anymore. I can go, go to the graph so I can see the difference. Uh, if I just take, I cannot filter via the instance. So I will take la that like this. Up. I will put that there in the query, run execute. And then I see the stages of my black box exporter. It tells me 1 or 0. Uh, in the other metrics that we have, some are interesting, so I will show you them. What do you have? So this is one of them. You have the time that has been spent in the connect phase, in the processing phase, in the DNS, uh, in the TLS, and in the transfer. So you have a drill down on the time that the request took. So if you have a timeout, if you have something strange, you're okay, it is because the TLS was very slow, or it is because the DNS server is answering slowly, and you can see actually what is the bottleneck. So we already have bottleneck at the connect level, for example, because uh, we were topping the bandwidth of one of our switches, and with that you can see that, okay, it's the connect phase that's failing, so there is maybe a bottleneck in the network, and it's not the application that's failing. By the way, this is the Prometheus interface. So you have you can run your queries there, and then you press execute, and you have the list of the values. You can also see the graph of the values. So by default, it shows you the console, because if you have 10,000 elements, then your browser will die if you go to the graph. Prometheus will not die, but your browser will not like it. So you can prepare your queries, and when you have a, a sufficient amount of stuff you want to show, then you can do this. You can show, okay, show me the graph, even stack it, and then I can see, okay, well, what is done, what is up. Uh, this is not how you should make graphs in Prometheus. This is more like a debugging or a inspection tool that you can use. What you can also do, so this is the instant values. I will take one. And you can say, okay, I want to see, I want to uh, see the 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 values for the last fi the last five minutes, then you can put five minutes in the query between square brackets. You execute it, and then you see okay, at that timestamp the value was one, and you can see directly without going to the graph part. You see the the whole values and the time that Prometheus did took the value the the value. So hopefully it was always one in this case. So networking uh, first with the DNS. Uh, we also use uh, something from Prometheus, which is the uh, renaming of the matrix. So, so the way you configure Prometheus is with at least a YAML file. And my connection is dead. Let's take another run. Oh, no, it's back. So in my Prometheus.yaml, you can see that uh, I have a global configuration first. So I say, OK, every 15 seconds, I will scrape my, my uh, targets, and I uh, will run my rules every 15 seconds. You, we will see the rules later. And then you say, OK, this is the, the target. So I have a job Prometheus which is listening on that as well as local 1990. Uh, then if we look at the DNS black box, it's a bit more, a bit more complex. So my target is loaddays.org, but the exporter is not loaddays.org. So you see, OK, I will do some complex stuff to take 
uh, the address so that thing I will put it in a parameter called target then I will take the target I will put it in a parameter uh, in a label called instance and the actual address will be the black box exporter address so this is kind of a more complex stuff that you need to do if you want to have it uh, in a more in a more nice way but you only need to do it once and you can then add addresses uh, how you want to have them so it's kind of a trick uh, but this is the way that you go from one flat list of targets to a more complex stuff when you actually not only have the target but also have the black exporter address that Prometheus needs to address but all of that is in the documentation I will not bother you longer with that no, it's not the more important stuff right now. So it is the same for the SNMP exporter. So let me go back to the configuration. So we have a job SNMP, we have a target, and then we need to say, okay, this is not the Prometheus exporter because switches don't speak Prometheus yet. So this is like the end device. And then you say, okay, I will pass that as a target, then the target will be an instance, and then the actual SNMP exporter, which we expose the matrix, is at that address. So if we like, uh, have a look at that, in the status page, you can see that first. So you can see SNMP, the exporter is at, at that address, that HTTP address, and this is the parameters, and this is the label that you have. So now, I have metrics with SNMP. So I, I told you before that when Prometheus stores the data, it adds uh, labels. So the labels that are added are the ones that are in that category. And also the job name, so SNMP. So if I want to see all the metrics that we have from SNMP, I can just say job equal SNMP. And I don't need a, a metric name. And actually, metrics are actually labels behind, uh, the names are labels behind the scenes, so you can filter on names if you want. But in this case, okay, what did, what did I get from the SNMP jobs the last time I ran them? And then you see, we will exclude, so I will show you the, how to use the name stuff, because I am not interested into the ghost stuff, because they are related to the exporter. Maybe I will need them one day, but not now. So the name is the underscore underscore name matrix, and I can use a regex to say, okay, not the one that starts with go, uh, like this. And then I will get less matrix. Okay. And process neither, by the way. And script neither. Ah, oh, so much matrix. And I will also exclude up. So that, okay, now we have uh, some SNMP metrics, so I can see, okay, how much time did it take to collect my metrics? Then I can see, did I just remove too much metrics? Or is it just not working? Or maybe it's just failing. No. Yeah, I just removed this up, but it should be. Let's try again, like this. Which, what did I do wrong? So I see the metrics, but, or maybe just the exporter is not rendering anything anymore. So, yeah, maybe they have just killed it. Uh, let's see what we get in the last error, because this has worked before. Mm, or maybe it did not work, and I've dreamed it. Okay, so we don't have the information. Oh, yeah. I think I know what I did wrong. So, But I can show you the different way. So if I go to the SNMP exporter, then I can say, okay, this is my target. Um, so that's demo SNMP stuff. And the module, I want to have the interface names. And then I will look why I, it's not working for me, but, and that should, okay. Now I have the matrix there. If alias, I have the alias of my uh, interface, I have the description, then I have the, all the packets. So basically that exporter will go and query uh, the, the demo, the snmplabs.com stuff with the module that he knows. 
And if you don't have a module that suits your need, then you can uh, actually add them in your configuration of your SNMP exporter. So sorry that it is not working in Prometheus. Uh, uh, well, some some things needed to be wrong, right? Uh, so if I look at SNMP, okay, it is because I fetched the slash matrix, and I should fetch the slash SNMP. So I can actually fix it. So, up, I miss this. No, it's not that one yet. It is slash SNMP. And then Prometheus will go and do, uh, I will just uh, reload your configuration and then it will fetch the correct one. So now, slash SNMP unknown. And within 15 seconds, it will go and fetch it. Hopefully. So, up unknown at the end. You can see, okay, well, just one, the honesty jobs, okay, there is none. So now it is up, and now I can show you EF underscore, okay, if alias EF. Okay, now I have the data. I can see, okay, this is the amount of bytes that have been into the device, the bytes that have been out of the device. Okay. Um, what did I do with my slides? I think I killed them. So SNMP. So DNS you have done, a network you have done. You also have exporters for devices like Nextseller, anything you want. Uh, databases, so I will not demo that. Uh, but you can also run queries again a against a database, which is very useful to get your business metrics. Uh, so you can run queries and just get metrics out of them. You say, okay, I want that metric, uh, that query run it every minute, something like that. And then you have the result in Prometheus. So that was what I was telling about security. So security, Prometheus support TLS clients uh, with mutual SSL if you want, uh, but it does not serve that. So what we use is traffic. It's a small reverse proxy in Go, and it also exposes Prometheus metrics, which is handy. So we also understand how the reverse proxy is is working, uh, and then we manage certificates with Ansible so that uh, we have an actual expiry date on the certificates, and Ansible does the rollout of the certificates for us. So that's how how we use it, and you are responsible for that part, so it's not the Prometheus project that will say, okay, please give me five different parameters because I need to know the, the username and the password that I can accept, or the three different SSL certificate, and then the CA chain. So this is out of Prometheus ends. So I have already shown you uh, a bit of the, uh, of the interface, but now I will show you some queries. So let's go. So we have the uh, Apache uh, rate, right? So this is the number of requests. But it's, did I kill my, okay, probably, oh no, okay, I. So this is not really helpful because I see, okay, uh, I have a lot of requests, it's increasing, and then, but it doesn't mean anything, right? So you need to do something with that. And what you do is you take the rate of them. So you know how many metrics, Per second did I do in the last five minutes? So let's do it like this. And now we have some numbers like, OK, apparently at that moment something was wrong. Yeah, because we moved, I moved the file, right? So uh, it is not longer during uh, 200 anymore. So you see, no, so you have a first query, which is the rate. So when you have a value that is always increasing, you can take the rate. If you want to, de more, to be more precise, you can say the rate over the last one, one minute. And if you want to be even more precise, you can tell Prometheus to do the high rate. It is it will just take the two last values and do the diff. So then you see directly when things went wrong. So you see it's exactly at that moment that I stopped uh, the web server. Okay, but then I still have like uh, too many values, right? 
what like I have two different four hundred. Okay, so let's just do like I want to do the sum. I want to group them, group the rates. Uh, I will group them by codes, and then I will just get the different codes of my request. Actually, what I should be doing there is that result method. So I can remove a label and say do the sum, but forget that label. And then I have the same result, except that I still have the job name, the instance, and the label that I call conference, so I know from which web website is coming from those errors. And now I see, okay, but I am not actually interested in values that are zero. So I can say uh, greater than zero, and then I just have a bunch of values, so apparently I did some 403 and 404, maybe when I did the demo, and show you, yeah, this is a nice website, maybe I, my, my browser tried to get the five icon, or I don't know which file. So that's why we see there. Or you can also say, okay, I don't, what is the order? And then you see, okay, uh, yeah, there is like no post anymore, so the rate of the post is zero. Uh, the rate of uh, the get with a status 400 is zero as well. Uh, you can do a bunch of stuff. So without label is actually without code. Sorry. Okay, so now you see, okay, post and get. Now you see the number of get, the number of post. It It is not what I wanted. Uh, what I wanted is without method. Okay, now we get it. Then you can compare them. So you can say I want to see uh, the 200, so code equal 200. But I want to know when there are more the 200, more 404 than 200. So I will do this like this. So I have, I take 404, and then I will tell Prometheus, tell me when it is more than 200, and that will not work, because it is comparing something with 404 on one side and 200 on the other side. So I need to say, okay, but. When you compare the two different uh, vectors, don't look at the at the code. I know it will be different, so I do ignoring code. And then, okay, I, I saw. Okay, at that moment, I have more 404 than uh, 200 responses. And then you can start to get some metrics like that, and you can. Uh, say, okay, at that moment something went wrong, and I know that. Or you can even say, instead of 404, like, what is not 200, right? So that even if suddenly your application is serving 303, it's still not normal, but then you don't need to have 10 different queries. You say, okay, what is not 200 versus what is 200? So what I don't expect versus what I expect. So you are still in the data-centric approach of saying, okay, What's important for me is that I get 200, and not that I do not get 404, that I do not get 403, no. What's important is the 200 thing. Okay. So for storage, Prometheus is using a TSDB. Uh, it is an internal database, and basically you have blocks of two hours of data, and then they are compacted later on, so at the end it is, you have 10 days of uh, data into one block, and uh, it is compacted so it does not take a lot of disk storage, and it is really uh, efficient. So there is no external storage, it is uh, on disks locally. Uh, let's go for alerting, but I want to show you something uh, last thing first. So uh, in my Prometheus server, so I have told you that with Prometheus, you have some uh, discovery tool, and I've implemented one of them. Uh, it is the DNS discovery, so basically you tell Prometheus, okay, this is the DNS query that you need to make, and then all, your, that you, all the stuff that are returned, then use them as a target. So if I do uh, dig, do I have dig? Yes. Targets.fadapi.be, and I fix. I have two different IP addresses, and if I look in the Prometheus configuration, then I see that the job Linux, it is a DNS configuration, it checks targets.prolapi.be, 
the A records and then the port will be 900 for the exporter because that's not an information that you get uh, from DNS. So now I can see my Prometheus targets that actually uh, the Linux are using those two IP addresses. I can try to change that. Um, I will try to change that and see, we'll see if it is changing. Maybe I think it might work. So let's see. I will put a 9 instead of 8. So I have updated the DNS and we'll see if it picks up. So I, uh, by default it should refresh that every 30 seconds, so it should come soon. Linux. Let's see if it gets a change. Uh, maybe I can already do the dig stuff there. Oh yeah, but so uh, because I am using uh, the DNS provider is my cloud provider, I was expecting that maybe they would update it directly, but apparently they don't. Okay. Yeah, it will come in a quarter. <laughs> okay, so uh, alerting. So I don't know where the text of my slide is, but basically, uh, one tool does one thing. So you have Prometheus on one side, and then it will uh, do the alerting part, but only sending a bunch of alerts. And then there is a second tool, which is called the Alert Manager, that will actually say, OK, I have an alert. I will first group different alerts together, because if 10 different hosts are done, you don't need 10 different mails, just one mail with all of them. Then it will do uh, like inhibition, like if the data center is done, is done, then I will not tell that all the hosts are done. So you can do uh, stuff like this. Like you can say, if this alert is on, don't send this other one. And what is it, it is also doing is it is dispatching the alerts. Like if the alert has a label uh, load days, I will send it to info at loaddays.org. If the severity is important, I will open a ticket. If the sever severity is warning, yeah, I do nothing because you should not alert on warning stuff. Uh, but you, you can do a bunch of different uh, stuff. So in Prometheus, first, you have recording rules. So uh, <coughs> which are uh, YAML files. So in this case, I have a rule that cal first I do some calculation so that uh, I have a new metric in my Prometheus, and I don't need to do the calculation of the rate each time. So if I use that in a dashboard, then I will uh, not do the request every time I open the dashboard, but I will do the request in advance. So if I take that metric that I have created with that what we call a recording rule, and I can see the metric, I can run it, and you can just see, okay, I calculate the rule, and this is the rate that you have. You can see them also there. So you have the list of the rules. OK, that's my rule. That's the time it took to evaluate it. And then uh, I then have an alerting rule just after that to say, OK, if I have too many four four errors, then um, uh, I will alert. One important thing is the four five minutes. It means that, OK, if for one second I have four four, then I will not alert. I will wait for five minutes to have, uh, to have the troubles. So I also have the alerts tab when I can see, OK, that is uh, an alert that is firing. Firing means that I have already spent the five minute waiting period. So this is becoming really critical. So you see the labels of the alert. In this case, there is just alert name. Uh, because I have, uh, it should also have code. I don't know why I don't see it. We, uh, and then you can, okay, it will send that to the app manager and the app manager and say, okay, we have too many errors, do something please. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, no, I don't have labels. Maybe I needed this. Yes, okay. There is a mistake in my query anyway. 
so I have an alert. But Prometheus doesn't know, okay, what is going on with the alert. He's just like, okay, I will send it to another demon that will do the rest. And I don't want to deal with uh, Slack. I don't want to deal with uh, Hipchat, uh, emails. No, this is out of Prometheus business. So for that, there is the alert manager, which is a second demon, also made by the Prometheus team. And it knows, okay, this is the alert. And then it will do the dispatching of the alert. In this case, I configured like uh, some routes. So you see that I have two different receivers first, like I can send mails to load days. In this case, it is sent to the load days email address uh, from that email address. And then I have a second receiver which sends to that email address. You can integrate with a uh, webhook, so post JSON file and write your own integration. You have Slack. You have a lot of different options that you can use to do alerting. Uh, what we have internally is a lot of custom made stuff and then you we move forward. So I will not demo that because we are running a bit uh, out of time for now, but uh, the alert manager can do anything you want further for the alerting. Uh, okay. Oh, here is a slide. Okay, but if you want something more clever, then you need Grafana to do the graphs. And uh, Prometheus as a project says, Okay, uh, we have uh, uh, we have something to do the the graphs, but actually you should use Grafana, and that's what the project is saying. So they are really promoting Grafana, and there are some Grafana uh, employees that are directly Prometheus developers. So there is a tight relationship between Grafana and uh, Prometheus. So you should use Grafana to do your dashboards, uh, and you can also link Grafana to your Elasticsearch or your other monitoring system. So, but Grafana is the first choice for Prometheus uh, dashboards. So we skip that. Um, okay, dashboards, blah, 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 blah. So configuring Prometheus in Grafana, it also supports mutual SSL. It also supports a lot of different stuff if you need them. Uh, you can also say that it is the browser that will do the query against the Prometheus server. Uh, so that you don't go via the Grafana as a proxy. So you have a lot of different options. Then what do we have? Um, you have a built-in Prometheus dashboard in Grafana to check the Prometheus status. Um, OK, so let's go to the conclusion. So Prometheus is an open source tool. And uh, what I really like about it is that it is dynamic, that you can plug it to uh, Kubernetes, to console, and that you don't need when you power a new pod or when you power add a new server to uh, add it in the monitoring system. It is automatically added. That's something I really like. Uh, it is low on resources so that we have a very, very small Prometheus server for the size of our infrastructure and it manages that very brilliantly. And if, if it doesn't, then we have all the metrics to understand, okay, what is the bottleneck? What do we need? There is a very rich ecosystem. So what I have shown you as exporter is just like the tip of the iceberg. There are literally hundreds of them. And there are also a uh, system that expose metrics natively. And for your own application, you have bindings in all the languages to expose metrics. So uh, Java, Go, Ruby, Python, anything, you have, uh, you have uh, the, the bindings that you need. And I really like that. I can use the same tool when I am in the cloud environment and the same tool when I am on premise. I have not covered that, but they can also talk to each other so they can say, okay, I will take those metrics from that primitive server and integrate them into mine. So that was the talk. Uh, thank you all. If you have any questions, you can just ask me during lunch or anything, anywhere you want, because there is just like five minutes left. I can still take one or two questions if you have them. Yes. Thanks a lot uh, again for the presentation because for sure I know more about Prometheus now than one hour ago. Um, you mentioned that you were also using the traditional Elasticsearch and Kibana uh, set up aside just to analyze a lot. But what you show with HTTP, for example, doesn't step on Elasticsearch tools because it seems to be more or less the same thing that you are doing twice then. No, so uh, basically what we do with Prometheus is just a general overview, like uh, we only take the status code and then we get all the advantages of Prometheus. It's very fast, it is low on resources, and we can do uh, very simple queries. 
with Elasticsearch, then you have more complex queries. It's more time to put that in place. And but what we do is we reuse the same work patterns. We reuse a lot of stuff from both of the of the systems. But uh, Elasticsearch is there. Okay, I have something that is not normal, and I want to see. Okay, is it from one IP address? Is it for uh, one TLS uh, mode? That kind of stuff. So. When you really need to go deep, then you need something that can analyze really the logs. But this is not the goal of Prometheus. It's really to have just a lot of metrics that you can understand your infrastructure, but not like, oh, at that exact second, then I had that request that took one minute. So if you want to do request track, uh, tracking, then you need uh, Elasticsearch in addition to Prometheus. And it also makes that for us, Prometheus is less uh, GDP are sensitive than the Elasticsearch setup, so we treat them differently as well. And also the advantage of this is really it's very, very low on resources, and we can just know without doing complex query into Elasticsearch that will require a lot of CPU time, or I don't know why. You can look a month in the same time, okay, this is uh, my status for a month, and then you have it, and you don't have a lot of uh, resources needed to do that. Yes? So, if you have your traditional LAMP stack service, um, you need maybe fewer supports. You would need those supports, you need the support of the logic that you need to be running. Is there no way to, or is, is the intention of Prometheus to have a kind of multiplexer exporter? So, you could have one exporter. I'm looking for a way to reduce the need to run all those different beams and especially to export them all via HTTP or the so uh, what we do for that is we just put small reverse proxies that yeah. just connect to different exporters. But so the problem is that the Apache exporter is developed by someone, then the Grog exporter by someone else, then the node exporter by the Prometheus server. So there is no stuff like that. It's really one tool, one job. Yes. Yeah, so I will repeat for the recording. So uh, it's not really a worker one. So uh, you have in the node exporter, you can read text file with metrics, and you can use that if you have cron jobs or your application can write to those files if you want. So you can just write metrics into files that will get fetched by the node exporter. Uh, that is the only worker one that you can have. Uh, but it is mainly used for like cron jobs or batches that you can do on a server, and then you can see, okay, the result of the last cron job was that one, and blah, blah, blah. But apart from that, it's really one tool, one job. Uh, for some cases, you can also push metrics. And then you don't need really to pull them. Uh, but uh, the point is, guys will tell you don't do that, so. Yes? Uh, we, uh, we are not seeing any uh, huge usage, uh, CPU or memory usage of the Quark exporter, and we use it with 100 requests per second, and it, it exports uh, because of all the metrics that we export from the logs, like 20,000 metrics each time we scrape it, so it's kind of okay. We don't have any performance issue with it at least. And it's a small daemon, and it just reads one line at a time. And it's fast in us first. Okay, thank you. And <laughs>